So today we are going to talk about UCSC Genome Browser. So let's see uh, how we can access it and what kind of information is available there. So for this, we have to simply go on Google and or any browser and you have to type UCSC Genome Browser and something uh, like this will open up. So the first, uh, we click on the first link available and you will see on the home page of the genome browser will open up. Now about a brief introduction of UCSC genome browser. So this is a, a tool for visualization and for the analysis of genomic data. Here we get various types of visualization interfaces with the help of which we can explore the genomic data, we can look for the annotated features, and we can also have the vast array of the experimental data uh, collaborated with the genomic data to get some biological interpretations. Now, uh, if you look at the home page here, so on the home page, we have this genomes, uh, which include the assemblies of different organisms. The first three are of humans, then we have of mouse, then we have archive gena, then for the SARS-CoV and for the other organisms. So according to our research question, we can select the genome assembly and then we can uh, search the query. Then we have different tools available here. So on this platform, you can get different tools. We have genome browser, then we have BLAT, which is uh, for the alignment of the sequence to the genome. Then we have the lift over, which convert the genomic coordinates into the assembly. Then we have table browser, with the help of which you can download and filter the data from the genomic browser, and many other tools. And here in this section, you can get the updated news about this uh, browser here, the tool here. And then we have some uh, videos available for the learning part, for the education part, which you can access easily. Now let's move to the uh, query part. We'll have a quick hands-on here. So uh, the very first thing is we have to select the assembly. So we are interested in working with human genome. So I have just clicked on the genomes, the human genome, and you can see the page will open something like this. Now let's try to understand what this uh, page with different colors and different lines it's trying to tell us. Now here we can see this is a UCSC genome browser on human, and this is the name of the assembly. Then these arrows, uh, this gives us the command so that we can move from here right to left on the sequence that is available. See, it has shifted here. And then zoom in and out option is available, that how much zoom in you want to give it or how much zoom out. Uh, you want to have so that you can have a larger visualization here. And then this multi-region, it gives the, uh, this section here, it gives us about the position of the chromosome or the position of the input query that we are interested in. And along with this, we have the search query with which where which we can give uh, multiple types of inputs, like we can give gene, we have chromosome range, search terms, and many more. So let's understand what type of input we can give here. So these are the different types of input queries that we can give to the genome browser. We have in the chromosome name, in the locations, then we have different uh, IDs available here, NM, and then we have uh, like, we have a sequence also, so these are different kinds of input and you can see here uh, with the help of name also, you can search it like this and the gene name or the um, letters here. So you can access through any of the queries that you are familiar with. Now, if you move further, now we can see we have accessed the human genome, uh, the entire human genome, and now we want to look for some specific gene. For example, let's say uh, we are interested to visualize TP53 gene, which is a tumor protein gene, and it is associated with the cancers. It's... So here we can see 
this is T, uh, TP53, and then uh, we have some omium alleles, omium genes. We'll understand what these different lines are. Now we have selected the gene of interest, and we can see this is present on this particular location uh, on the chromosome number 17. It is present there, and it is the specific location here. And you can see this is a visualization of the chromosome, and this red one is representing the uh, position which is given over here. Now, if we look at the display page over here, we can see we have these uh, lines available. You can see I have clicked on it and it turned blue. When I right click on this, you can get different option. If you want to hide this section, you can simply click on hide. Uh, if you want some dense, compact information, you can see uh, it will change. So this is something dense, which will give you a compact form of visualization. If you want to have squish, it will give you a squish information, but without any features here. And if we see to the pack, pack will give us information and along with the all the features along with the uh, features labels also. Now, how to read this? We can see the orientation of the arrows. The arrow, they are starting from the right-hand side and they're moving to the left-hand side. So that means this arrows, they are telling us about the polarity. So from where it is starting is five dash and the other end is the three dash. So the polymerase is going to bind on this section. So this is how the arrows they are, are uh, understood. What is their function? Now, if we click, uh, if we un if we try to understand what are these big blocks and these uh, thin lines over here. So these big blocks, if we put cursor on this, we can see they are exons. And if we put a cursor in between, we can see these are introns. So exons and introns, they are visualized here. And this is the how it moves. Now we can see, okay. So uh, sometimes what happens is we get, if I click on, for example, I click on full. When I click on full, you can see different uh, sequence for T. 53 they are available and only this one is highlighted so what does it mean so this UCSC browser it is uh, collaborated with different other tools and browsers also from where it receives the information so it is a uh, it is a visualization tool which gives the access to all the data which is available on TP53 but it gives a consensus result so this highlighted one is the best a uh, result it is a consensus one of all the databases or all the tools from which it has gathered the information now if we click on this tp53 so what we can do is we can get these different types of information so detailed information you can get it from here it gives you about the description the transcript the position which how many zones are present here on which strand it is present like this and then we have sequence and links to tools and databases the genomic sequence is available, the mRNA sequence, the protein alpha fold. So these are different tools and databases uh, uh, which you can access through UCSC browser itself. And then we have some information about the Uniprot KB. You have cellular locations, you have domains, you have disease associated, you have some web resources which you can access. Uh, the primers which are designed for the transcript that we have clicked on, the Malakar gene association, that this particular gene is associated with how many diseases. So you can access all kinds of information here. Then we have tax, uh, toxigenomic database here. And you can see all, uh, you can click on more and you can get a complete list. Then you can get the RNA expression data from the GTEx. That means we have 53 tissues and from the 570 donors. And in all these tissues, uh, which tissue is having the highest expression of this particular gene? So we can see it is in, uh, from here we can see it is in transformed lymphocytes over here. So like this, we can analyze the expression data also. Microdata, if available, it will also be present like RNA-seq data, but it is not available here. Then we have mRNA secondary structures. You can get it from here. Then we have protein domain and protein structures. Again, you can retrieve here. You also have the PDB 3D structures, which you can easily uh, get from here. Then we have ortholog genes in other species. 
then uh, you can also understand the gene ontology of this specific gene. That means we are talking about molecular functions, uh, the biological processes, as well as the cellular components uh, this gene is associated with. Then we have uh, to the access to all the associated gen bank mRNAs also. Then if you scroll down, you can get information about, it's a lot of information available here. Uh, like you can get the information about biochemical and signaling pathway this particular gene is associated with. So it is in MAP signaling, cell cycle, P53 signaling pathway, apoptosis. So we can see mostly they are cancer related and we know TP53 is associated with cancer. Then we have NCI cancer genome anatomy project. So information from there is also available. Then reactome, which is a pathway uh, analysis tool access to that is also available here you can simply click on them and you can get the you can it will take you to external window from where you can retrieve the information now uh, we have access all the information from here now if you want to retrieve the sequence suppose i i want to retrieve the sequence for this so i've simply clicked it right uh, this is already selected from here. Now, what I can do is uh, I can go to view. I can go to then DNA sequence. And from here, the position is already selected. And then I can select, uh, scroll down, and then we can select on get DNA. And this is how you can get the FASTA sequence also. So this, uh, from here, you can copy it and you can use it for your further analysis. So now let's move back. So one of the feature here is you can access the DNA sequence also. Now, if you scroll down, like you have omium alleles associated. Now, if you click on this, you can see, uh, click to the alter to display uh, density of omium alleles. We'll click on this and we can see these are the omium allelic uh, variant phenotypes here. You simply click on it and it will give you information. This is about non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And the next one is about the leaf from any syndrome. And simply by clicking on it, you can access the information. Now, what uh, different types of information is here? You can simply, this display is of these sections, mapping and uh, sequencing. Suppose you want to, uh, from the mapping and sequencing section, you want to understand, uh, you want to have the visualization of chromosome band. So you simply uh, click here and you select full. So you can see in your representation, you are going to get this chromosome visualization also. Right? And, okay, chromosome band and then if you are interested in gene code or you want to have some information from the uniprot or if you're interested in phenotype and literature so whatever like uh, this omium was available there so because it is shown here if you want to hide it so this information will be hidden from here the omium was hidden from here now if you see, uh, we are interested in, if you want to see what are the variants that are associated with this particular gene, you can access through a DBSNP, which is a database for single nucleotide polymorphism. Then we have Thousand Genome Project, DBSNP, uh, archive is there, DGV structure var is there. You can show them genome in a bot bottle. You can simply um, genome variants. You just click on show. And if you scroll up, you can see these are available. Genome variants. Uh, if you see, this is the variant here. And okay. And then transcript expression level is also here. So all these information, uh, like next, uh, we have comparative genomics. If you want to compare the sequence of this particular gene amongst different organisms, so you can simply select it from here, then full, and then you can see it will appear above. Then repeats, if you're interested in repeat maskers or some microsatellites or repeat masker like this, you can simply show here and it will show in your visualization. Now, if you want to hide all this, hide all other tasks, 
So it will eventually hide everything from here. And then again, you have to manually select and then you have to add on the screen. So this was all the information that you can retrieve from UCSC Genome Browser. So that was all for today.